tried to do everything possible to rebuild the trust that law enforcement, prosecutors, and police have lost with the public. Our society demands that we be able to trust our public officials. I want to talk to you about two separate cases. The second case involved a local therapist and centered around an allegation made by one tragically mentally ill woman who was that therapist's daughter. She accused him and 15 or 20 other members of the community from being involved in horrific crimes. Yesterday, I was provided a copy of an alleged witness statement of that tragically mentally ill woman. And for the first time in reportedly 15 or 20 years since the report was given, I learned that my wife and I were part of those allegations, alleging that we were guilty of cannibalizing young children and murdering young children. Hello, everyone. Welcome to, well, this is going to be the David Hamblin case series that I promised all of my listeners on the Chiller Queen podcast. If you're listening on YouTube, this is only going to be about a 15 minute. Um, my brain's a little uh, crazy right now, but I'm going to I'm going to do the best I can for you guys. I'm Avery Warner, host of the Chiller Queen podcast. If you're listening on YouTube, this is only going to be a 15-minute preview of the full episode. I'm going to put each episode a little preview on YouTube so that more people can hear about this case. Because ironically, if you Google David Hamblin, you will see there's not much information out there about this guy. And it's a very crazy case because I stumbled upon the David Hamblin case when I was studying into satanic ritual abuse and mind control, which came out of the Temple of Set Michael Aquino episode. And I stumbled upon the David Hamblin case because this is a recent case that originated during the satanic panic era. And that a lot of cases during the satanic panic era of the, you know, 80s and 90s were just chalked off as some mass hysteria of you know, people thinking that Satanists were taking over the world and that there was some organized satanic cult that was ritualizing and abusing children all across the nation. And so nothing came out of it mainly, but a lot of the allegations that these victims made had a lot of supporting evidence behind the fact that they had most likely been abused in some way. And so to, to have all these people, you know, not get charged for a lot of these things, you know, has been an ongoing issue amongst a lot of people. And people have continued to research this for a long time. So when I found that David Hamblin, who is a psychologist out of Provo, Utah, I found that he just recently, a year ago, got arrested for satanic ritual abuse on children on multiple victims okay and I started looking into his case but I was like there's not very much out there talking about this I think um, if you go on YouTube maybe some local news channels reported it you google it there's only these minimal reports talking about it I'm sure the media doesn't want people to think that you know, go into another satanic mass hysteria. They don't want to play into that. And especially in our culture nowadays is very different than it was in the 80s and 90s. We're a lot more accepting of this satanic culture that is coming out and so blatantly obvious. 
But this case has been ongoing regardless if people aren't talking about it in the media. Okay. But there are some independent researchers and journalists who've spent an immense amount of time on still putting the pieces together with what's going on with this case. And that's what I'm here to do is to present to you what a lot of us people are working on behind the scenes. And the reason why I would love to put this as a free series on YouTube, but there are a couple of reasons why I'm not going to do that. The first is there, I don't even think I can put it on YouTube. I don't know the regulations of YouTube. So a lot of the stuff that I'm going to be talking about very heavy, it talks about murder, cannibal, you know, eating each other. Um, I don't even know what I can say on YouTube. Epstein harm of children. Uh, there are very sensational claims made in these victim statements of what was done to these children. And I can't really go into detail, I don't believe, on YouTube or else I'm going to get my channel nuked. So I'm only going to give you a preview of what's on there. But also, there is a lot of people who have spent an immense amount of time, energy, and money into gaining the court records, the court documents, the victim statements, the videos with the Freedom of Information Act. And they've spent a lot of money to do this and they've spent a lot of their own individual time putting this all together and getting that information out there that the media is not doing themselves. And so in order to compensate for that time, we got to put this behind a paywall. So if you're interested in learning more about this case, the David Hamblin case, uh, I will put a link to my <clears throat> premium Rockfin channel in the show notes, as well as on the main portion of my channel on YouTube. Uh, and you can go over there and just like, I mean, the cool thing about Rockfin, <laughs> I'm not going to do an ad for Rockfin, but the cool thing about Rockfin is I want people to know that if they do sign up for me, and if this is the kind of content that you are interested in, in, you know, viewing, just know that it's not just me you would get access to if you sign up as a subscriber under my account. You will actually have access to all the creators on the platform and there are a number of amazing free thinkers on the Rockfin platform who are talking a lot about the same things that I am talking about plus a lot more. So I don't know if you've ever watched tinfoil hat Sam Tripoli there's Isaac Weissup from the occult symbolism on pop culture there are you know Eddie Bravo there's a lot of really awesome big names over there that have amazing channels and so luckily you sign up under me you have access to the whole platform not just my content so it's a little bit better than like Patreon okay you don't have all these subscriptions going for all the people that you love to subscribe to so that's a really nice aspect but if you want to watch the entire thing head on over there now enough about that um i went on a little bit of a break on my podcast and i said i was going to take a break from this david hamblin thing i already put one episode out which you can view on my youtube channel the full thing for free i was letting people kind of get a little glimpse into what i was going to be creating but as i did that and I started actually going through and systematically putting this together so that you guys understand this case from start to finish. I realized that there are so many working components to this that just reading the victim statements and going through what I think are my opinions of things, I think would do you guys a disservice and you guys wouldn't really understand the gravity of this case or what was going on. And you might think that the victim statements are very sensationalized and maybe not give as much credibility to the victims. Um, and so I really wanted to give you guys a background and a history of what we're really dealing with here. So the first couple episodes, um, I'm going to put this into a two part. Well, this is going to be a very multiple part. It's probably going to be like 10 or 11 videos. 
But this first video that I'm going to go over today is going to give you a background of the LDS religion. It's important because this church of this LDS Church of Satan, which is the alleged satanic cult organization that's operating within the LDS church in Utah, Provo, Utah, which is what David Hamblin allegedly, according to the victim statement, was a part of. In the victim statement, there are a lot of people who have been accused as abusers that are part of this LDS Church of Satan. So David Hamblin is actually just the more sensate, the more he's gained the most, like, I don't know the word that I'm trying to think of. He is the one who we think is just the person being accused in this case, when in actuality, he's just the person in the spotlight right now. It's not actually about David Hamblin. It's about this organized LDS Church of Satan group. And I feel like it's important for you guys to understand LDS history, some of their beliefs and doctrine, so that it gives more evidence to the claims that are coming from these victims. So I'm going to go over that and then we're going to give a brief about the David Hamblin case in the next episode. So I'm not going to waste anybody's time. I'm just going to get on into it and I'm going to do a PowerPoint. <laughs> There's a lot of pieces to this whole thing that I don't want. It's impossible for me to just sit here and blab it all out. I don't want to miss anything. I have it all structured out so I don't miss anything. And uh, we're going to do it that way. We're going to do it that way. And I'm not very technically savvy. So if I do some weird shiz, you can just, uh, you know, you can laugh at me. Or you can do whatever the hell you want. But you can also read along with me, you know? Okay. Let's, uh, let's just get on here. David Hamblin. Okay, just ignore tinfoil hat. <laughs> I, I put this together because I, I put together a summary of what I'm going to be talking about on a future episode of the tinfoil hat with Sam Tripoli. Because I'm actually going to be talking about this case on there. So if you're a fan of that podcast, stay tuned. I will be featured on there. But here we go. Okay, so let's do a little background here. A little background on David Hamblin. In the late 80s and early 90s, he was a psychiatrist or a psychologist in Spring City, Utah, and he was also a member of the LDS Church. Now, when you look into the victim statements, his daughters were actually some of the people who came forth, and they're, they're the ones who have... They're the original uh, abuse reports, victims reports. And in their detailed statement, they give a lot of really detailed information about what went on within their family. And they gave a lot of information about this alleged LDS Church of Satan that is a very vast organized religion that is operating within the LDS Church. So they claimed that their family wasn't actually LDS, that they were actually members of the LDS Church of Satan. This has no affiliate affiliation to Anton LaVey's Church of Satan. So if we say Church of Satan, a lot of people like to group it all into one category, but there are actually various different sects of the Church of Satan. And when you think about this, when you think about the Church of Satan in Anton LaVey's aspect, they're very much the adversaries of everything that Christians stand for. All of their beliefs are inverse to Christian beliefs. And that's very much in line with the LDS Church of Satan. So the reason why they um, went to the LDS Church, according to the children, were as a guise to, you know, the outside world. They attended the LDS church 
And that was kind of their like, you know, guys behind this like church of Satan, that they weren't part of the church of Satan. They were Mormons. They were good little Mormons. And David Hamblin, he had this ranch style home that he gave his therapy sessions in. He didn't go to it. He didn't have a business. He would bring his patients to his ranch style home to give these therapies. And eventually we'll talk about why that is. But eventually David Hamblin, he got involved with the Native Native American church, which was ran by James Mooney, where he would host these healing ceremonies. And then he would administer the psychedelic cacti known as peyote to the attendees. And during these ceremonies, he liked to use the cacti, these psychedelics, in order to access and manipulate their minds while they were under these psychedelics. So that's why we we leave ourselves open to these dark entities, these dark forces, whatever it is, when we take psychedelics or drugs or alcohol or any of these types of things. And David Hamblin knew that. And so he got on board with that. And he he very much was into this, like, this healing, healing ceremonies and psychedelics. Some of David Hamblin's patients were some of the most prominent and well-known people in Utah. Utah being a very LDS community, they had a lot of members that ranked in all these different positions in society, not just in the LDS church, but in society in Utah. And some of these people were patients of David Hamblin. And for over a decade, I know that David Hamblin just got arrested a year ago, but for over a decade, victims were coming forth and telling the police that they were being abused by David Hamblin and nothing came about it. Every single time that the police started investigating into it, one time in 2012, which we'll get into later, David Hamblin was arrested and every single time there wasn't enough evidence available to convict. So they let him off without prejudice which basically means that the case is dismissed, but it will remain open to investigation. And if they collect further evidence, then they can bring charges against him. So the allegations, this is why this case is so interesting because this isn't just about David Hamblin abusing people. This is about, it centers around a satanic ritual abuse cult operating in various Utah counties, but the ones being discussed in court because we're, it's, it's secluded to David Hamblin. It's not secluded to this big satanic organization, but the ones pertaining to David Hamblin, those include New York, Arizona, and California. Those are all the areas that David Hamlin's been accused of abusing people in. Now, this Church of Satan, uh, when I say Church of Satan, I mean the LDS Church of Satan, okay? This church has had evidence that it, it has existed in Utah during the 90s and up to, and even maybe after, but what we have found is there's at least evidence that it it was operating up until 2010, could still be going. But this consisted of LDS members, the Church of Satan consisted of LDS members, disfellowed and excommunicated members, and the membership within this Church of Satan actually overlapped with various other religious groups such as polygamist Mormons and Native American religious groups that used peyote in its healing ceremonies. So the alleged members according to the court documents 
they're prominent within the LDS and the Utah political and business establishment. Particularly, concentrations around BYU, Provo, Spring, and Alpine, Utah. 